Hey everybody, in this video we take a look at Stephen King's 1985 collection Skeleton Crew. I will show you what to look for when trying to identify first US and first UK editions of this book. The US edition was published by Putnam. There's the back cover, author photo. Unlike a lot of Stephen King's books from the 80s, which were published by Viking, this one is pretty straightforward to identify as a first edition. Look for a price on the jacket of 1895, and on the copyright page, which is pretty elaborate and covers all the stories contained therein, look for a number line that has the number one. And that's how you know it's a first edition, first printing. And normally, I have to qualify that, that this would be a first, uh, first trade edition. And as you can see here, it does reference the limited first edition of the book published by the Scream Press, which was an elaborate production um, that I'll talk more about later in this video. But actually, while that book was intended to have been released first, it was delayed because of production um, issues of some kind. So this edition actually beat it to market, which would make it the actual uh, first edition. It's pretty cool. Anyway, under the jacket, have dark gray boards with Stephen King's name imprinted, lettered in gold foil on the front cover. It looks really sharp. Black cloth covering the spine with gold lettering. There's the back cover. The front uh, cover of the jacket includes an image from the short story, The Monkey, which scared the hell out of me when I was a kid. And I was very familiar with the paperback. And the paperback also included the same image. And yeah, I had some pretty weird and messed up dreams <laughs> because of that mechanical monkey. Anyway, enough about that. There is the first US edition of Skeleton Crew. The first UK edition of Skeleton Crew was published by McDonald. There's the front cover with the skeleton imagery. The Scream Press limited edition was full of skeletons very on the nose skeletons skeletons everywhere and this one appropriates a similar type of image skeletons on the front cover back cover different author photo of Stephen King it's not necessarily printed very well it's um, a little dark and hard to see but there he is so inside the front cover, the front jacket flap on the UK edition, look for a price of £9.95 net in UK only. There's a title page, more skeletons. On the copyright page, look for the language. First published in Great Britain in 1985 by McDonald & Co. Publishers Limited, London and Sydney. There will be no language about um, further printings or editions. That is what you look for. And underneath the jacket, this is pretty par for the course for Stephen King books, UK editions of this vintage. Um, just a single color all the way around. In this case, it's brown. Um, and this one very much appears to be paper to me. I have heard this um, type of material described as cloth. It might be, but it sure feels like paper to me. And the lettering on the spine is in gold. As you can see, my spine has a bit of a skin condition. It's looking a little patchy, but anyway, the jacket looks really sharp. And the price was right for this one. So, Glad to have it in the collection. And there you have it, the UK first edition of Skeleton Crew. Skeleton Crew has received limited edition releases both in the US and in the UK. 
um, in the UK, PS Publishing uh, tackled it in one of their heavily illustrated, um, vividly colored um, editions in 974 numbered copies that were signed by the artist, not signed by Stephen King, and 26 lettered edition, 26 lettered copies that were signed by Stephen King. Incredibly expensive um, editions to purchase was in the neighborhood of $3,000 and um, they are very valuable today, but they haven't appreciated in value so much because they were so expensive to begin with. The numbered edition, I think you could have picked one up when it was first released uh, in 2015 for around a hundred bucks and it's 250 or $300 now. So while it's, you're talking about less money, it is actually a bigger percentage return on your initial investment. The PS editions have their big fans and they have their detractors, but I find that they are, um, they are a good investment and they are popular. In the US, um, a very elaborate and really cool, it's one of my grails. If I had, if I won the lottery, um, I would spend a whole lot of money in one fell swoop and build my Stephen King collection, the collection of my dreams. And Skeleton Crew would have a proud place in that collection. So it was released um, in a thousand numbered copies signed by Stephen King and the artist, slip cased, seven by 10 inch oversize trim, tons and tons and tons of pictures and art that depict skeletons. It was a skeleton heavy release. And it was released in a 52 copy, I believe. I believe the letters go from A to Z and then start over A, A, B, B, C, C. And that edition is really cool and unique, but it's actually almost too unique for its own good um, as it's bound into a sort of like a portfolio looking covering that closes with a zipper. So you can't unzip the covering and carefully remove the book from that it's part of the binding um i'm not 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 that i have the means and i'm like in the market to buy one but i don't think i would be interested in the lettered edition just because it seems so impractical but the numbered edition looks really cool and um it was the numbered one i think was 75 dollars in 1985 which is is not cheap but um i think the the plan was for it to be released before the trade editions, which I showed you earlier in this video, but because of ballooning production costs and production challenges, production delays, it, it actually did not beat the trade edition to market. And though I know there's more to it than this, but I think it was, um, if I'm not mistaken, it actually put Scream Press out of business. Uh, they lost money on it to the point that they they folded. They went under. I'm sure that I'm sure there's more to it than that, but it was the last title that they ever released. It had a troubled production history. It was delayed getting to market, and for all the work and effort that went into it, I guess a cover price of seventy-five dollars just wasn't enough. But what have you? Um, the but it is a really cool edition, and. I I think, you know, thousand bucks, twelve hundred, maybe a little more today. So it has appreciated a lot since it was first released in nineteen eighty five, but it is part of that rarefied next level um tier of books that are out of reach um uh, for a lot of people all but the deep pocketed, well healed, extra serious collectors. But I enjoy looking at pictures of it. I scour eBay for it just on the off chance that someone pops one up and they're feeling sorry for someone like me and they um, list it as, uh, you know, buy it now price at the original asking price of $75. Um, maybe they've had it all that time and they just want to get their money back from what they paid. I, I, I don't know that there's actually people like that out there, but I love the idea that someone like that exists. It's uh, what keeps me searching. But 
anyway, yeah, I would be remiss to talk about Skeleton Crew if I didn't talk about the limited editions, particularly the legendary screen press. So I've said before in other videos that I'm a big fan of Stephen King's novellas. I'm also a big fan of his novels and not so much a fan of his short stories. That is true for me now, but when I was a kid, um, seven or eight years old, and started first trying to read Stephen King, the idea of reading anything that was four or five hundred pages long, or in the case of it, like eleven hundred pages long, was just overwhelming and mind-boggling. And I really gravitated toward the short stories. Um, the idea of reading something that was 25 or 30 pages long uh, seemed much more manageable to me. And I have some fond memories of reading the stories in Skeleton Crew when I was a kid. Um, this one, I'm gonna pull up the table of contents page. This includes some excellent stories. Uh, the monkey, as I mentioned, freaked the hell out of me when I was a kid. Um, and I, I have fond memories of those heebie-jeebie feelings that it gave me. Kane rose up. It's about six pages long. It's harrowing. It reminds me a bit of Rage, the Richard Bachman title. Um, I'll just leave it at that. But um, the jaunt, the wedding gig, the raft, the raft is essential Stephen King good stuff. Word processor of the gods. Um, beach world. Survivor type. Survivor type is hilarious in its own dark and demented way. Um, gosh, Uncle Otto's truck. The ballad of the flexible bullet. The reach. There's so much good stuff in here. And it starts off uh, with a novella. Um, actually, The Mist. Um, one of Stephen King's iconic um, shorter works, which has been made into a movie, um, a really good movie, which I highly recommend, but I recommend that you read the story first. Um, so Skeleton Crew, like a lot of Stephen King's collections, includes just an embarrassment of riches for one cover price. Uh, the Mist, you can buy in a standalone edition, which cost um, as much as trade paperbacks cost. Or you can get it in Skeleton Crew with a ton of other great stories. Um, so there's a lot of value here. Some of the stories are better than others. That's always the way. Um, but it is a, a good way to sort of test the water. It's sort of a sampler, a grab bag um, of different different types of stories, different types of writing, and while it is, um, I find Night Shift to be more thematically similar all throughout, I think Skeleton Crew is actually a richer and deeper collection, and I highly recommend it. The US and the UK editions are pretty cool, and they're distinct enough from each other that I felt really compelled to have both in the collection. Um, my UK copy has some issues to the spine, but the jacket looks really sharp. I just um, keep an eye out for great deals that show up. I bought um, the US edition at a bookstore for eight bucks, and I think the UK edition was 20 bucks or, or so. So if you're searching for these things, you may be tempted. FOMO, fear of missing out, kicks in. And you might think, oh, there's a copy and it has some issues, but I better jump on it even though the price is too high. It's more than I think it should be, more than I'd like to pay. I should jump on it. Um, I encourage you to, to wait. Um, patience is a virtue when it comes to collecting and these um, good things do come up. So anyway, skeleton crew thank you very much for hanging out with me and i hope that you all have a great rest of your day thanks bye